Hey, it's Thursday, June 27th, and we have two tropical disturbances to watch in the Atlantic as we head into this weekend. One is a tropical wave dubbed Invest 94L by the National Hurricane Center. We'll be moving west-northwest across the Yucatan Peninsula in Central America and into the southwestern Gulf of Mexico over the next two to three days. And then we have a tropical wave way out in the central to eastern Atlantic, which could develop as it moves westward towards the Windward Islands, eventually making it into the Caribbean. And so we may be tracking this one for a week or longer as we head through the weekend and into next week. We're going to start the video briefly by talking about 94L, and then we'll talk about 95L second. Here's the zoomed in loop on 94L, and this is a tropical wave axis that remains fairly messy and disorganized. You can see south flow in the low-level clouds down here north of Panama, and then easterly flow to the east of the Yucatan. There's a wave axis somewhere in here, probably passing the Honduras-Nicaragua border right now, and most of the convection is on the southeastern side of the wave axis. We've been watching this for a few days, thinking its chances are low but non-zero for development, and that seems to be maintaining that story as this heads west. There are a couple of environmental factors that are hostile to it. One is that if you look at the upper level cirrus just southeast of Cancun, you might see them streaming left to right on your screen, and then you can see the cirrus streaming northeastward across Cuba. So there's this smiley face shaped trough over the northwestern Caribbean and there's some dry air underneath it as well. So there's some wind shear and some dry air hitting this tropical wave from the west. And that's going to continue as the wave axis propagates into the Belize or eastern Mexico region and then out into the southern Gulf of Mexico. And it's probably going to have a hard time disentangling itself from that upper level trough. This is the ECMWF model showing low level rotation or vorticity in coloring. And then the wind barbs are 200 millibar upper level wind. And you'll be able to see the northeasterly wind barbs over the Gulf of Mexico, the southwesterly barbs over Cuba. So you can see this upper level trough axis that is digging in, generating this westerly flow that's hitting the tropical wave in the face from the left. And as this continues towards the Yucatan Peninsula, you will see enhanced coloring. The wave does amplify because it's slowing down, which helps it to become uh, more curved. Uh, but this upper level trough is still here, right on top of it or to its west. And then as the system moves across into the Gulf of Mexico, you'll see that there is still an upper level trough or upper level cutoff low directly over top of these orange colors, indicating that this wave really never gets out from under the thumb of this upper level trough, even after it gets into the Gulf. Now, if we look at the low level wind explicitly, you'll see the wave axis at the current time and this propagates toward the Yucatan Peninsula, and you do see it get a little bit more amplified just before landfall here, but it doesn't look like it will have enough time for development prior to moving over the land mass here, and then it will be arrested a little bit by land interaction and then pop out over water again, and we could potentially see this try to develop a closed circulation prior to hitting Mexico a second time, but uh, most models keep this pretty weak and it's entangled with the upper level trough, which means conditions won't be optimal for it. So chances remain fairly low for tropical development, but it's not off the table. Uh, regardless, there will be a corridor of rain that occurs again, like we had with our first two systems this year, Alberto, and then the invest that followed Alberto will get yet more rain for the Yucatan Peninsula area and then Eastern Mexico uh, once this makes a second landfall in a few days. We're going to move out to the Central Atlantic now and talk about Invest 95L. This is a tropical wave that has amplified as it has come westward off of Africa and has formed what is likely a closed circulation, albeit rather broad and elongated. You've got northeasterly trade winds on the north side here, and you'll see southwesterlies on the other side. So it's embedded within a weak African monsoon trough at the moment. Down here, in one part of the loop, there are northerlies, and so you're starting to see this loose wrapping around and closing the circuit of what might be a broad, elongated circulation in here, but there's nothing super tight. So there's probably some area of low pressure centered here, but it's not compact, it's not wound up, it's not well-defined enough to be called a tropical depression yet, but realistically, it won't take that much for this system to start knocking on the door of being a tropical cyclone. So we're likely to see the National Hurricane Center paying close attention to this over the next couple of days. Conditions are anomalously favorable for this time of year. It's quite early out here for something like this. And for that reason, this might be kind of slow to develop just because there's not a lot of 
uh, favorability thermodynamically for deep sustained convection. We are seeing uh, pockets of convection on and off on the western side of this uh, wave envelope, uh, but this time of year, we typically don't see these take off in a hurry. So most models are slow to strengthen this, but they do in fact strengthen it because wind shear is not going to be as big of a problem as it typically is this time of year. If we look at the European ensemble mean going out to uh, tonight, this is where the wave is, and this is the upper level flow. Now you'll see that there is an upper level trough, the tut axis here, uh, but it's not laying westerly flow all across the central Atlantic, which it typically is in June. Instead, we have this ballooning upper level ridge rotating clockwise anticyclonically, and the wave 95L is on the south side of that. So there's easterly flow aloft. Pair that with the low level easterly trade winds, and we have lower shear than you would typically expect. And this follows 95L all the way toward the Caribbean. So you'll continue to see this upper level ridge escorting the wave into the Caribbean, and the tut is not there to create a wall of wind shear that would typically prevent development in June. So as this approaches the Windward Islands, we could see a developing and maybe strengthening tropical storm here. It's not yet a lock, and we need to see it actually consolidate and generate sustained deep convection for a couple of days in order to be sure. But we could very well see that, and models have become a little more aggressive with this as it approaches the islands, but there is still some variability. If we look at the GFS here, this is the mid-level moisture plot showing our invest down here, some moisture associated with it. There is some dry air just to its north, and you could see that on the satellite loop. If I scroll up toward the top here, there's some stratocumulus cloud fields here indicating a stable dry air mass that is right on the boundary of the broad circulation right now. So that is hanging around, but the shear is low. So eventually the model within a day or two days develops a moist pocket and it starts to amplify enough convection to generate a closed, tight, deepening low-level circulation. And this is becoming a tropical depression or storm on the model at this point. This is by late Friday night, early Saturday morning. And on the model, it continues west and intensifies. And this is near hurricane strength by the time it reaches the Windward Islands. The model hasn't consistently shown something this strong there but it is on the table now, and the ensembles show that there is a legitimate chance for this to be strengthening on arrival in the islands. The European model shows kind of the other side of this, where it's much weaker, definitely not a hurricane strength system, ironically because there's a little bit of easterly shear. Typically, you'd think westerly shear is the problem uh, for these storms at this time of year in this location, uh, but the euro actually shows a little bit of a tilting westward with height of the wave axis and that shear keeps this a little bit weaker as it enters the Caribbean. So there's still some spread here on the possible outcomes of what kind of impacts could be expected in the Lesser Antilles and Barbados. We don't know yet for sure. Uh, we'll know a lot more once the system actually tightens up and starts developing uh, in a real fashion. For the moment, it remains a little loose and disorganized. And during this phase of development, there's a lot more uncertainty in the future than after the storm has actually formed. Now, after it arrives in the Lesser Antilles, you know, this is about four days, five days out. So we're talking about Monday morning is when it could be passing through the islands on these models. And thereafter, it's going to cruise into the Caribbean. There is enough of upper level ridging to the north that is going to continue to usher this towards the west. And at this point, again, we're running into the calendar. So it's June and especially early in the year like this, I guess it'll be early July by the time it gets to the Caribbean, but June and July in general, the central and eastern Caribbean tends to be hostile. If we look at a map of the average intensification that tropical cyclones are undergoing during the year, any time of year, orange indicates intensifying, blue indicates weakening on average. So obviously you'll see them weakening over land when they make landfall. There's two big hotspots where they intensify a lot, the western Caribbean and the central Atlantic in the main development region. But in between the central and eastern Caribbean and near the Lesser Antilles, there tends to be slightly less favorability for intensification, and that's due to a couple of reasons. One is that the trade winds get really strong here in the Central Caribbean especially, and especially in late June and July. They're typically strong, so you end up with surface divergence and less environmental rotation or vorticity in the Central Caribbean. And you've got tall topography. If you're anywhere near Hispaniola, you can see how that depresses the average intensification rates, even if you're over water to the south of the Greater Antilles. The mountains 
uh, wreak havoc on low-level inflow and cause lots of dry air and problems for, vort for vortices that are nearby. So in general, this is called kind of the Caribbean graveyard. The central to eastern Caribbean is not as favorable on average. And so we typically expect storms to struggle there, especially if they're weak and especially if it's June or July. So models do bring this into the Caribbean and some intensify it and some don't. So when 95L gets into the Caribbean, yes, the upper level ridge is going to be following it. So there's supposed to be upper level easterlies over top of this. But if we look at the explicit wind shear plot from the European Ensemble, there is still shear here, westerly shear. You can see that here. And this is because even though there's upper level easterlies, the lower level trade winds are actually a little bit stronger than those upper level easterlies. And so that nets out to a westerly shear in the net. And so this is going to be running into less favorable conditions, most likely, as it tracks into the Central and Eastern Caribbean. Now, the models disagree a lot on how hostile these conditions will be. This is the European ensemble, but if we look at the GFS ensemble, there's actually significantly more shear. And that's been a common pattern on the forecasts for 95L, is the GFS has less favorable conditions overall. And the models have been having a hard time figuring this out because depending on how strong 95L is when it passes the Windward Islands, how large it is, that'll determine how resilient it is to this shear. And the shear is kind of dancing at the moderate threshold. So if it's 15 knots versus 20 to 25, that could make a big difference in the ultimate future of the system as it moves through the Caribbean. Now let's look at the uh, European model just really quick as this moves into the Caribbean. You'll see the system move through and uh, you'll see a tropical storm that remains uh, a brown tropical storm strength as it moves toward the west and you'll start to see the moisture get sheared off toward the eastern side on the model and the system isn't really intensifying here now on some runs it has i think two runs ago it showed a hurricane developing in the central caribbean so there's been some variability and on the european ensemble we get a whole range of systems that dissipate remain weak or strengthen into strong hurricanes. We get the whole gamut of possibilities on the modeling right now. That's telling you that there's sensitivity and small changes in what's going on with 95L could mean a big difference when it gets in the Caribbean. If we look at the European ensemble for track, we'll see the cloud of red numbers here showing where the storm could be as it approaches the Windward Islands. And you see right now there's decent agreement that it's going to move through the southern half of the Lesser Antilles, but there's still some wiggle room there. How strong it is also varies a fair bit from weak tropical storm to strong tropical storm or weak hurricane. And then as it goes into the Caribbean, we see quite a spread in the track and the intensity, like I mentioned. So the uncertainty grows here pretty quickly. You'll see the track, some of them do recurve into the greater Antilles and start moving north. The stronger the storm is, the more likely it's going to try to turn toward the north a little bit as it enters the Caribbean. So much will depend on how well the system is able to develop and organize over the next few days. And we have many days to watch this. The plot I'm showing you here is a week out and uncertainty is usually quite large at seven days. And so there's not much we can tell you about how this is going to turn out in the Caribbean, but this is definitely a system to watch. It looks more likely than not to eventually become a tropical storm. NHC currently puts those chances at 70%. And uh, it's a favorable environment out there for June. Normally it would not be, but this is a system to watch over the next several days. It will arrive in the Lesser Antilles in about four to five days. So we'll watch it through this weekend and we'll probably get some more clarity as some of the days start marching by. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.